So thank you guys for um, being flexible. So I'm going to be the next presenter. We have to immediately enroll any student who presents to us as displaced or in transition. That's another word we also use for homeless. Can even so is a federal act and it's called Students in Transition and we call, that's what we use in, in our school district, Students in Transition. And just so you guys know, there's one of me in every school district across the country, even in Puerto Rico. The criteria that we use, it's basically a child who lacks a fixed, regular, or adequate nighttime residence. They are eligible for free breakfast and lunch. We also provide clothing. Students get a school backpack with school supplies in it. I order toiletry packs. We also do referrals. We do transport some of our kids that are um, close within our school district boundaries to their school on a regular school bus. We also use the cabs and other transportation providers. We try to just keep the family's dignity and don't let everybody know, all the teachers and staff, so we really just try to let our principals and our counselors. No. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I got you got it. it. Okay. I love this. The reason I decided to become a social worker, I wanted to be a child psychologist at first. I wanted to be a child psychologist. When my brother, who was eight, was diagnosed with encephalitis, I was 14 years old. So he had seizures and he was in a coma for about a year and a half. And he never came out of the coma, but we were there as a family. He had a trach. Uh, it was just a very difficult time for a 14 year old. Um, he died when I was 16. But during that time he was in the hospital, I would also go and talk to Timmy and go and talk to Harold and play games with Harold. And, and I just knew that I wanted to help kids in some capacity. So tell me a little bit about how things are at home. Better? It's better. Better than before? Yeah. Okay. You feel a part of the family? Not so much? Uh, not really. Not really? Yeah. Okay. No support? Still doing your own thing? Uh, I have support, just from my dad. Okay. Is he, um, but not, the person you're staying with not as much yeah. as you would like? Yeah. I have cap and gown, ticket for prom, and you're going to check on FASPA. I don't know if I told you this, but I had a lot of live stuff that happened, and things weren't great on paper, and... They accepted me and I didn't start off like right where everybody else did. I had to go extra semester, but nobody knows right now, so. I had lost my brother to this illness. My parents were at the hospital. My grades suffered. I was a freshman in high school and for that whole year and a half, I didn't want anybody to know what I was going through. I wanted to be normal. Let's get you applied there. I don't think they have an application fee. Because I didn't want anybody to feel sorry for me. And I used to describe it as I felt like I was in a play. That's your job tonight. And then my freshman year of college, my dad was diagnosed with leukemia. So many people that goes through this type of thing, you know. So you don't have to feel like you're by yourself because you're not. And I remember asking him, do you want me to come home or do you want me to finish school? And he said, I want you to finish school. I want you to be the first Rogers to graduate. And that was a place that I, I just hold. When I graduated, I um, had my graduation cap for you, Dad. And I knew what I've been through is lending itself to help somebody. My story is helping people. My journey is helping people.